All right, so this is part four. This part mainly concerns the clothing, primarily her overall and her boots, and this is one of my favorite parts because it's one of the easiest. Um, usually when I make a model, I start with the hardest pieces, which is why I saved the clothing for the fourth part and why I did her face almost first after the base. It's really important to do the clothing after the base because a lot of clothing can be extruded straight from the body, excluding um, certain things. Like I find coats easier to make separate. Um, accessories like scarves are usually easier to make separate, but clothing that fits pretty uniformly to the body is a lot easier to make just extruding polygons from the body itself. And with this really simple method, there are a couple things that help me a lot. Primarily um, adding shade to where the clothing meets the body. For instance, when you saw me do the overalls, I added a dark blue on the side of the overalls just to give it a little bit more form, a little bit more definition, while still maintaining the fact that it's part of the body. And this tends to work really well too with animations because you don't get weird deformations and then objects like going into other objects. It has its own problems, but it's a pretty good method. Another thing is to make sure that you pay really close attention to the silhouettes of the shapes on your clothing. And I find that it looks a lot better if you use many different like colors on the clothing. For instance, her pocket, her buttons, the bottom of her pants. Because you're cell shading your uh, model, you're going to want a lot of different shapes to stand out. It'll look kind of flat and boring if they're all one color, which is a problem I run into quite a bit when I'm making single colored assets or like say a dress with one color. So I always try and offset that by adding some silhouettes of color on it. And I find that little accessories like buttons, little bits of color here and there really can make the clothing stand out a lot. And here I'm just doing the boots. I spend a lot of time on this foot, uh, particularly because there are a lot of little details. The laces, the, the tip of the toe of the boot, the bottom. Even though this model will be seen from far away, I still really enjoy making the boots fairly intricate. I think they give a lot of personality to a character. Uh, I'm mostly just using the knife method where I just draw in shapes. You have to be careful to make sure that you are only creating four-sided polygons because if not you end up with something called an n-gon which transfers really badly to certain applications so just always make sure that you're aware that you're cutting into something that is either a three or a four shaped object and i'm just i'm always looking over at the rendered view to make sure that my silhouettes are distinct from each other that it's dark enough that it's light enough Another thing that I um, keep in mind when I'm creating color schemes is how I can repeat a color throughout the model. For instance, I created a little bit of gold on the buttons and then I thought, how can I put this elsewhere? So I put it at the top of the socks and I put it at the bottom of the boots. And the same thing with the pink of the shoes. I thought, how can I repeat this somewhere else? So I put it in the hairband. And that's um, one of the tricks of good color is to just try and see how you can use a limited palette, but spread those colors throughout the model. It's a really important thing that I keep in mind when I'm drawing as well. And I think that this minimalist approach to using just two or three colors, and in this instance I used pink, blue, and gold, and then you see how you can like bounce them around the image. And here I'm just uh, fixing up the hair, making sure things don't look too symmetrical, or at least not obviously symmetrical. And I'm going to now extrude the arm. I have another tutorial that covers this in way more depth. And I will link to it in the description. But all you really need to know is that it's a cylinder extruded from the outline of where the shoulder would be. And then there are three loops around where the bend of the arm would be. And you want to have this three loop structure on both elbows and knees because it works well with armatures. Low poly models have this issue with bending because there are so few planes that I come into, I come across a lot. So just always use the three loop structure around bending joints. I will be covering the quick sculpting of the hands in the next video and the final fixes for the model. So I'll see you there.